Today, I'm going to be taking apart this flexible screen that I broke and having a look at how it's made. I broke this screen when I was making the video about the folding iPhone. If you missed it, there's a, there's a link to watch it down in the description. Uh, I broke it when I was sitting here <laughs> flexing it over and over again as I was shooting the intro. Pretty painful, particularly since this screen cost me $500. But now, we get to take it apart. First, before we do that, let's have a good look at it. So you can see uh, the failure mode here is that the top layer uh, pulled up on the screen. And I think there's, I, I've been debating about it, but I think this layer here is just a protective coating. Um, and uh, I was actually talking about it on a live stream with folks. And it seems like probably what happened is this isn't actually the, the damage that killed the screen but rather there was some, also some damage in the lower layers. But let's kind of look at, at how this screen is laid out overall. So obviously this is the, the connector here um, that would go to the phone or in, in my case, the adapter board that I've been running them on. Uh, these pins here, I believe are for a digitizer and uh, are just pins that go to the connector, I believe, but we should check that. And then there's some sort of uh, IC here, and I want to look at that under the microscope. I, I believe I've looked up the part number on that and didn't have a lot of luck, but I want to try that again. And then we've got a bunch of um, passives here, so little little capacitors and things. And then this flex cable here that's got the connector on it goes to another flex cable that has, flip this over, it has a piece of silicon on the back. And I think this is some sort of like multiplexer or breakout or something. Because if you notice, it looks to me, and we'll look at this under the microscope, but it looks to me like there's a lot fewer traces here coming into it than are coming out of it. And so it's somehow multiplexing a signal coming in here and out to here. Now this was designed to fold up behind it and sit back here behind the behind the screen. And then this would be, you know, this this cable would be plugged into something on a on a phone logic board or whatever. Um, you can see it's quite scratched up. I, I I haven't taken the best care of this, but I haven't been super hard on it either. Um, these screens are just super fragile and just really easy to damage. So um, let's let's pull out the microscope and uh, and take a closer look. Okay, so let's look at this bottom flex connector here. In particular, a couple things. This here is the model number for the screen, and it's how I figured out it was a BOE screen, and I even found a, a manufacturer data sheet for it. Uh, so I, I put a link to that down in the description. Also think this chip is interesting, and I believe that I figured out that it was a Goodwin chip, but couldn't get the exact model number figured out. So um, we'll look that up. Well, I'll look up both of those in a minute, and uh, and and uh, put links down in the description. So I spent some more time after I shot this uh, researching that chip, and it turns out it's a Giga Devices GD25LQ80B, which is a quad and dual SPI flash memory chip. So I think it's probably being used to store configuration information since, you know, being a flash chip, it will hold its contents across power cycles. Uh, I originally thought it was a frame buffer, but that wouldn't make sense to use flash memory for you would just use regular volatile memory. And then, yeah, as I said before, I think this is just, these are all passives and capacitors and things. Let's look. I really didn't want, I'm curious what this piece of silicon on the back is. And, you know, as I said before, right, I don't even know if it's obvious, but let me focus. There are tons of little tiny traces coming out of this, but not that not as many going in, as you can see here. It's, it's a bit, well, they're, they're at least ganged together. Um, and this thing doesn't have any markings on it. I know it's really dirty. I can uh, clean it up. Okay, but there are just, oh, there are markings on it. I stand corrected. I did a ton more research about this long silicon bar, and I think it's actually the driver IC that converts the MIPI DSI signal into the correct control signals to actually drive the, the screen matrix. Uh, I believe the part number is an SW4304. However, <laughs> I can find almost no information about this chip. I can't find a data sheet. I don't even know who the manufacturer is. Based on digging through um, some Linux kernel code and some dumps of what look like Android uh, source code. It's possible that the manufacturer is Qualcomm, but I'm not sure. 
Uh, however, there is actually some code to drive this chip and drive this screen um, for both Linux and Android. So I'll link to both of those uh, down in the description below. In terms of construction, I believe that uh, this is anastropic conductive paste here or anastropic con conductive film. So ACF or ACP, um, which I used in the RFID video where I tried to make my own RFID tag. And it's, it's very cool. Let me grab a pair of tweezers. Um, it's very cool stuff. ACF and ACP only conduct vertically um, through some magic. And I explained that in the RFID video. I'll, I'll put a link to that down below. But um, basically, it allows them to spread it on here. And as long as this, this flux cable is lined up with this flux cable for the, for the pins, they don't have to worry about shorts between them. And that's pretty awesome stuff. So you can see how, how sort of rubbery it is. And that's, that's part of its properties. And then I believe it's the same deal where it touches the actual screen. So this is the upper end of that cable where it touches the screen, connects to the screen. And that, and then it's really fine pitched. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed that they can get those lined up. One of the things that's always perplexed me about this screen is that it has these extra pins that aren't populated. And I'm curious to peel up some of the, some of this so we can better see, because I, I haven't wanted to do that up until now, but I'm curious what those might be. Um, I, my hope is that they're a, they're a, actually a digitizer on here that was never hooked up, but I don't know. Before I take this apart any further, I'm actually gonna cut it in half. And that's because I wanna save half off. I've got a scanning electron microscope coming and I wanna save half of this to look at under that. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna slice it right up the middle and then I'm gonna cut this cable because I don't wanna cut all the way through the yellow cable. I'm going to cut this part right here. Okay. So we're going to take this part and save it off for later. I'm debating whether or not to take this part, just rip this part off fully. And I think it's held on by so little, I think I'm just going to go for it. So let's pull that part off. Yeah, that comes off pretty cleanly. Okay. Next, let's, uh, let's get this under the microscope and I want to start peeling up some layers here. I was thinking that we look at this corner here because there's a lot of interesting stuff going on there. However, it's really gross and dirty. So I'm going to first clean it up. Just. So what I would really like to do is start to separate these layers. So there are a number of different layers that make up an AMOLED screen. I believe that the layer we took off before, which was this one here, yeah, I think that's just a cover layer. It would be glass on a non-flexible screen. And then the next layer probably is the is the color filters because the, underneath all of this is essentially a grid of LEDs. So there are, there are little transistors that are being turned on and off by the control circuitry. And those are activating essentially a phosphor layer that is, uh, is phosphorescing and then that phosphor is all likely the same color. So it's probably blue and uniform across the entire, the entire screen. And then there is red and green filters that are essentially, uh, um, or red and green phosphor maybe, that is uh, giving us our, our red and green pixels. Um, whereas the blue is essentially a pass through. And I'm gonna see if I can get in here, maybe with a scalpel tip. Tell, tell you what, let's take a section off of this and then try and segment that. Cause I don't wanna break the whole thing. Just a section off the top here. That's something. But I think that's the entire screen. I think I'm tearing up the entire screen relative to the back substrate, the rear substrate. Now we're starting to see some different layers. So this grid is a grid of all the pixels. We are probably just looking at the, oh, you can kind of see it here on the edge. You can see all those different colors. We're looking, we're probably looking at the top of the color filter layer. So what I would like to do is separate that from the, essentially the LED layers. But that is, this piece that I have peeled up is all of those. I think, 
don't know what this is, but I'm going to guess it's just glue. It's either glue or it's like the very bottom cathode. The cathode is below. Yeah, see, that's the entire screen there. I'm going to try and cut off this corner that we've been hacking on. So now we have a little sliver of this. My thinking is that if I peel back the entire piece of this, Oh, this is very fragile. No wonder they put it on a strong backing. But this is one way to make it more flexible. Put it on a less stiff back. I don't quite know what this is other than mechanical support. It might be conductive. That is possible with this yellow film because that is then glued to here. I'm not an AMOLED phone screen expert in case you haven't been able to tell. This is exploratory for me as well. So we're looking at the underside now. So this should be the underside of the TFT layer. So essentially the thin, thin film transistors. So transistors that were deposited onto a thin film here so that they're flexible. And that, I believe we're looking at the backside of that. That's as zoomed in as we can get. It's not quite enough. So those are definitely the underside of the pixels. And I think we're looking at the, the transistor layer here. And then what's going on at the edges? So these are definitely sort of, you know, bus lines for both for power and, well, probably not power, for data, for columns and rows. And there's something going on. I can't really move my hand, but there's something going on out at, out at the edges here like in here, you know, so that's, it's so fragile. You can see, I just totally scratched it. And actually I'm rubbing holes in it. Just see parts of it are rubbing off and flaking on the desk. I had hoped we could separate this into multiple pieces, right? So this is the layer that is sort of the, the pixel filters and the color filters. Oh, you can see the colors really nicely there. That's lovely. But this is kind of the minimum viable screen, right? This is with everything else peeled off. This is this is the functional screen, and so really the I think the you know the question about how flexible a screen can be is how much does this layer sort of support damage, and then what what additional layers do you need to sandwich it in to you know, prevent it from getting scratched, broken, delaminated, whatever? Let's look a little bit more. Let's look at some edges here. So this is the edge where the where that green ribbon cable comes in. So these here are all the signal lines. This is where it sort of the rubber meets the road, right? Where peel this up. Um, yeah. So we have some ACP or ACF film here, and you see it's a little sparkly. It's got conductive metal balls inside it that do the conduction, debonding some of the traces here, but peel this up more, we should be able to see the traces underneath here, right? So that's connecting down into these traces right here. And it's just bonded right on the, I'm trying to figure out which part is which. I think the silver wires there come from the green cable, is that right? Yes. Some of it from the screen is still bonded up here. Anyway, there are some traces that they're, you know, connecting to on the screen. I'm still very perplexed by these, the other side of it. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I was really hoping those were a digitizer. I don't know. Could be power. We got these big, big thicker wires here. That might be power, maybe for testing. So, you know, this is being driven by columns and rows. Barely see it, but there are tons of little wires here that are all the various columns. And then your rows are coming in over here. And there's there's some sort of logic or something here for the rows. It's multiplexed or something because there's not as many wires coming up this way. But these are all the rows across. And so that's how it addresses each individual transistor. I'm a little curious what's going on here in the corner. I know that these screens, like this is just, this is the only part of the screen that lights up. This doesn't light up over here. There's some sort of switching or just wires there. Obviously, you got to run wires for your columns over here. So. So these wires still have to run through these traces. I, I wish I knew what caused it to break. It does look like there's some discoloration in here. So I wonder if that has something to do with that. 
And you could see how small these traces are. It wouldn't take much to, to cause them physical damage. So it explains why these screens are so fragile. I'm gonna take a little bit of alcohol and just clean this up a bit more and see if we can see anything else. But I think that's about it. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild how small this stuff is. It's amazing that you know, not only can they make one of these, <laughs> they can make a bunch of these and have them all work <laughs> or have enough of them work that it's economically viable, which is honestly pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, so there's one of my hairs next to it. So like, I don't know, at least the rows are similar to the width of a human hair. Um, so that's pretty small. Depends on what, what you think is small, but I, I think that's pretty darn small. Well, I think that about does it. If you haven't seen the video that I broke this screen in about making my own folding iPhone, you should definitely go watch it. There's a link up here or down below in the description. Also, did you know that I live streamed the making of this video on Twitch? Uh, there's a link below to my Twitch channel and to the YouTube channel where I upload all of the recordings of all the streams. So go follow me on Twitch so you get notified when I'm live. I'm Scotty from Strange Parts. I'll see you again soon.